Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. So Nova, who is a long top subscriber, hi Nova, uh, suggested a bunch of really, really good um, black women in fashion for Hidden Figures. And today is the other Wednesday of the month, which makes today Hidden Figures Day. And I'm going to use one of your suggestions. I wrote them all down, Nova, because they were like all super, super, super dope. And today's is going to be Eunice Walker Johnson. Um, I'm super excited about this hidden figure. Eunice Walker Johnson was the wife of publisher John H. Johnson and an executive at Johnson Publishing Company. Johnson was best known as the founder and director of the Ebony Fashion Fair, which was started in the 1950s as a hospital fundraiser and became an annual fashion tour that highlighted fashion for African American women and ran until a year before her death. And she died in 2010. So it just recently, um, it started in the 1950s and it just recently kind of ended uh, in 2010. 2009. So born Eunice Walker on April 4th, 1916 in Selma, Alabama. She graduated with a degree in sociology from Talladega College in 1938. During her matriculation at college, Eunice joined Delta Sigma Theta and she met her future husband, John H. Johnson, in 1940 while she was attending Loyola University, Chicago. She was married after earning her master's degree the following year. Together with her husband, she established the Negro Digest in 1942, a magazine styled after Reader's Digest. The rapid growth of their first publication encouraged them to create Ebony, which I'm sure we've all heard of that magazine, a monthly designed to emulate life and its style of boldly photographed front covers. Johnson had been the one who suggested that the magazine be named for the dark wood, and by the time of her death, Ebony reached a readership of 1.25 million, while its weekly companion jet reached the circulation of 900,000. The Ebony Fashion Tour began as a fundraiser that she created in 1958 for a hospital in New Orleans. In its half century of existence, the tour visited 200 cities across the United States, Canada, and the Caribbean, raising over $50 million for charity. And the tour was a pioneer in using African-American models on the runway and in helping to highlight the works of African-American designers. Building on her difficulties, excuse me, and finding cosmetics suited to the skin tones of her models, Johnson first began mixing makeup colors for the varied tones of black girls and then created Ebony Fashion Fair Cosmetics in 1973 as a line of makeup that would be sold in leading department stores. So here's somebody that was like, she created this like huge fashion show for charity using black models and using black designers. And then she was like, it's no makeup for my girls. Create my own makeup too. Stars like Leontine Price, Diane Carroll, and Aretha Franklin appeared in the company's ads, and within three years, the growing popularity of Ebony Fashion Fair Cosmetics prompted Revlon to introduce the polished Amber's line for black skins, Avon to start Shades of Beauty, and Max Factor to produce beautiful bronzes. So she pushed the mainstream makeup companies to start making makeup for black girls. Doesn't that sound familiar? Like, so like Fenty and like Iman Cosmetics and all that stuff, like they're all walking in the footsteps of Eunice Walker Johnson. Uh, Eunice Johnson was also a mentor and a very good friend to Andre Leon Talley, the former editor at large for Vogue magazine, and he frequently traveled with her on the Ebony Fashion Tour. Johnson died of kidney failure on January 3rd, 2010, at the age of 93 at her home in Chicago. She is survived by her daughter, Linda Johnson Rice, chairwoman and chief executive of Johnson Publishing, as well as by a granddaughter. In 2010, the Noble Network of Charter Schools and Chicago Public Schools opened Johnson College Prep High School, a public charter in Chicago's Inglewood neighborhood in honor of Johnson and her husband, Johnson H. Johnson. She was buried with her husband in a private family mausoleum at Oakwood Cemetery in the greater Grand Crossing neighborhood of Chicago's South Side. And I have a really good quote that I want to read to you guys. We were the ones who convinced Valentino to use black models in his shows back in the 60s, Mrs. Johnson told the New York Times in 2001. I was in Paris and I told him, if you can't find any black models, we'll get some for you. And if you can't use them, we're not going to buy from you anymore. And what happened? Some black models magically appeared on the runways because money talks and bullshit walks. Eunice Walker Johnson, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Nova suggested like six or seven women. So I'm probably going to be doing those for a while because 
I love fashion. So I love learning more about uh, kind of unsung heroes, you know, black women in the fashion industry. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, see you guys next time. There's going to be really, 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 really great interesting links on this woman in the description box. So please make sure you check them out. And I will see you guys for the next Hidden Figures video. It is, again, the last Friday of the month, so there will be a Black Friday video coming as well. Peace!